G'day, I'm Claire, the planner gypsy. There's this popular notion, I'm sure you've heard it before, that you need to eat meat to get enough protein. Now, science has taken this a step further and says now that the human race would not have evolved into being the intelligent species that it is today if it wasn't for eating meat. Now, this just gets up my nose a little bit. Uh, not least of all because nobody was there to see us evolve into intelligent species. So how's that scientific? But number two is, is anyone really going to argue that carnivorous cats are more intelligent than elephants or grey African parrots or gorillas, which are all vegetarian? But anyway, it's not really my point. Back to this theory that you have to eat meat to get enough protein. This idea has blossomed in the last few years into something much bigger than it was before. Now people are saying that protein is the best food for you and carbohydrates are the enemy. Now to me, this straight away just seems like utter nonsense because if you look at all recorded human history since forever back, the main staple food of every people group has been a carbohydrate. Uh, potatoes, wheat, kiwi cha, um, quinoa, corn, rice, you name it. But it's always a carbohydrate with some protein because protein was always expensive and hard to come by and it was always rationed out. Now look, I'm not a scientist and I'm not gonna try and wow you with all these things that they found in the lab, but I can show you my experience and I can show you my story. And I think we can give some credit where credit's due. My name's Claire, I'm 35 years old, and I was born a vegetarian. I was born into a family who only ate vegetarian food. That means my entire life, I've never had a meal of meat. That's right, I've never eaten a cow, a pig, a fish, or a bird, or any other creature. Now to be fair, a couple of times it's been in my food and I didn't know, but I can count the amount of times I'd have it on one hand. So I have never eaten animal protein as a part of my diet. But on top of this fact, I don't actually like protein. That's right, I don't like protein. So when people become vegetarians, they are told and advised to replace the meat protein with a vegetarian substitute. Now that's probably a good idea, right? But usually those substitutes are things like beans, lentils, um, legumes, uh, or nuts, and things like tofu. Now all of these things are good foods, but I just don't like them. I don't hate them. Like if someone makes me a meal with lentils in it, I'll eat it. And if you make me tofu in Thai food, I like it, I'll eat it. But I never go out of my way to eat it. I never crave it. And I probably eat it, to be fair, once, twice a fortnight. So according to the, the idea that you need to eat lots of meat to get enough protein to live, and then further on, um, you need to replace that if you're gonna be stupid enough to be a vegetarian. Um, you need to replace that with a load of beans in order to survive or, you know, your hair's going to fall out and, and you're going um, to turn into some um, quashy awkward child from Africa because you don't get enough protein. Well, truly, I, I should be dead by now. My hair should have all fallen out. I should have muscle wasting. All these things should have happened to me, but apparently I'm kind of okay. It looks like I got quite a lot of hair going on here. Uh, not Not... Not, not lacking anything here. I don't really spend much time thinking about vegetarianism. Like a lot of people will come and talk to me about it, but for me, it's just normal, right? So it's kind of like talking about the idiosyncrasies or the weirdness of being an Australian. Well, you don't think about that. You just are, right? I'm just an Australian. I do Aussie things because I'm Australian. I like just eat vegetarian food because I'm vegetarian. I don't think a lot about it. I don't plan my meals. I don't count my nutrients. I don't worry about where my next protein is coming from. I just eat pretty much anything you didn't have to stab before you fed it to me. So vegetarianism to me is not something that's a big deal. My diet is far from perfect, let me tell you. Sometimes I eat chocolate, sometimes I eat pizza, sometimes I eat hot chips. But on the whole, I can, I'll tell you what my diet is, my day to day, the basics of my diet. It consists of Bill's Ancient Grains and Activated Sourdough Super Seeds Loaf, not because it's nutritionally awesome. Incidentally, it is nutritionally awesome, but just because I really like it. 
Cobram Estate Extra Virgin Olive Oil, also because I really like it. It is cold pressed and it's Aussie. I paint it on with a paintbrush. Yes, I know that's weird, but it's the easiest way to get oil onto bread. And Marmite. Also because I just really like what it tastes like. So my staple food is Bill's bread with olive oil and Marmite, fruit, and that's anything I can get my hands on at the time. Today it's oranges and pears and microgreens because microgreens are what I do as a business. I grow microgreens, they're everywhere and they're really, really good for you. So there you have it guys. My diet is microgreens, fruit, wholemeal toast with Marmite and olive oil. I eat two, mostly three meals a day. I don't snack between meals. I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink coffee. I don't smoke. I do drink a lot of water and I do like to sleep. Um, when I eat, I eat a ton of food. Um, usually more than my husband who weighs almost twice me. But basically what I'm trying to say is my protein comes almost 100% from eating seedy wholemeal bread and the occasional egg or pizza on the weekend. Or I need to add when my trainer feeds me ravioli, which leads me, I guess, to where the rubber hits the road. My trainer and my gym. This is Taipan Muay Thai gym and this is my gym. Taipan Muay Thai is a full contact sport. Taipan was named after its owner, Tony the Taipan Favuzzi, because during Tony's fight career, he was WMC Oceania super heavyweight title holder. So don't mess with him, he will beat you. This is McFlurry. This is Teddy. He was also Australian champion a few years back. This is Eric. And this is Nakarin, otherwise known as Naki. But don't let Naki's boyhood looks confuse you. He is also Muay Thai and K1 champion, so he will also kick your butt. I've been training here at um, Taipan for four years. I train three to four times a week, pretty much every week, and I love it. I get a little bit bashed, but I'm always smiling at the end. I'm obviously a fair bit smaller than these boys, so I'm no match for them. They're a bit better than me too, I'll be honest. But gram for gram, I go all right. We do full contact sparring and I'm not broken yet. And I'm sure, in fact, I'd like to put the challenge out there. Come and visit Taipan Muay Thai Gym and come and ask these boys, Ooh, cardiac wise, how does Claire go? And I guarantee you that they'll tell you that, they, that I will give them a run for their money. Well, they will if they're honest anyway. We have, um, some of the guys go really hard. Eric likes to go quite hard on me. But I'm okay at the end, because that's what Taipan Muay Thai is all about. It's about determination. It's about um, not giving up. It's about getting hurt and getting back up again. And it's about discipline. You know, sometimes we go home bruised. Sometimes we go home a bit stunned. Sometimes we go home sore, but we're away for a week and we're back into it. I love this video. I don't get to hit Naki very often. In slow-mo, it's even better. <laughs> but Taipan is all about being strong and being a bit tough. And you couldn't be like that if you were lacking in nutrients. If you don't have enough protein, you're not gonna survive training this often and this hard in a place like Taipan. So I'm trying to show you guys that I'm not lacking in anything here. I don't have Koshiyoko. I'm not protein deficient, even though my protein diet seems to be so low. I don't have snapping nails, my skin. Well, you know, it has the odd wrinkle, I'll be honest. But it's all right, you know? And then, and look at my hair, guys. Like, it's enormous. I'm just definitely not lacking in my hair department. It's not falling out. I'm not getting sick. Look, I have muscles even. And will you know, oh, what do you know? I even have abs. So oh, there you go, guys. Yes, rip that. And this is the evidence that at least for me, the diet that I have is quite okay. My high carbohydrate, death-defyingly low protein diet is helping me survive like it has for 35 years. I'm doing kind of okay. And I'm gonna show you why I believe that's the case. And God said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. Genesis chapter one, verse 29. So my reason today for showing you this was it so that I could brag about my hair or I'll tell you that you need to eat the same way that I eat. But instead, just to show you that when God in the beginning said that humans were made to eat grains, nuts, fruit and vegetables, that he was onto something. And despite our fad diets and cutting out carbohydrates and stuffing ourselves full of protein, 
God's way is still the best way. And I guess that I'm somewhat of living proof that God had a plan and it's still good 6,000 years later. Thanks guys for watching. See you later. Do something. I'm videoing now, so do something now. What do you want us to do? Flex. I don't know. Find fighting stance. <laughs> Look like an idiot. I don't care, really. I'm taking to the extreme with a guy. He's in the super saiyan. I just thought I was acting like a husky.